Premium Talk Radio for premium conservative listeners. Andrew Wilkow and the Wilkow Majority. All right, this this is one of those uh, this is one of those segments. You know, we find this is the one thing about being on Sirius and XM that that you find listeners and listeners find you in the oddest of places. And I I am a History Channel junkie. And I was just saying before uh, Terry Shepard's joining us in studio, uh, and we'll go do the whole biographical information thing in a second. That uh, I my favorite History Channel documentary was on Hurricane Katrina. When we had newsroom editors editing footage to tell the story they wanted to tell, not the story that needed to be told, and the History Channel stepped in. They talked to the Army Corps of Engineers. They they went through the history uh, of the construction of the Lower Ninth Ward and the fact that the French, you know, had seen an Indian burial ground and said, "Well, it doesn't flood there. Let's build a let's build a town." And they went through all the way back to the the French settlements, the Spanish takeover and so forth to modern day uh, New Orleans and you really got this sense of wow this is when you apply this through the prism of real history and not not bias you get a very different story now joining us on the program right now is te- now you were okay like you went 82nd airborne right, that was my rangers first, right, green yep. berets and how did you end up cuz you said you're still you're <laughs> are you still technically yeah. active duty? Well, no, I'm actually what happened was I was active duty for about almost 9 years and I got out in 97 and moved back to New York City and went to acting school on Broadway. Yeah, it was a life change. So you want to be like a Rob mm-hmm. Riggle. <laughs> Yeah, whatever it was, it was quite an adjustment. And then, you know, I finished that in 99 and things were going well for me, TV and some uh, a lot of theater. But when 9/11 happened, I had to think, well, all right, man, do you go on auditions? Or do you get back in the fight? I mean, I've been in Special Forces for almost nine years. It wasn't a decision. So, But I went back in. They have National Guard Green Beret units around the country. Mine's in Rhode Island. And so uh, by October, I was back in the, in, in the military, and I was getting trained up in my Special Forces medical skills. And, and I was back in the Middle East uh, by, by March of 2002. And every time I'd go on a combat deployment, I'd come back, man, and I'd get acting gigs or some kind of performance things, which... You know, the entertainment business, God bless them, most of them aren't really too hip to what we do. And but isn't there Warriors, Inc.? Isn't that Dale Dye's D- company? Dale Dye. Well, the, my final episode, uh, uh, I worked with Dale Dye on that. You're exactly right. Warriors, Inc. And he does all sorts of advising uh, for, for different projects. He also has a group of dudes who train in different fighting styles. And if you look on my show, all 10 episodes, we use them as green screen guys, whether it was Mayans. Spartan. And I want to talk about all these. Or, all, yeah. And I want you to. I don't want you to Adele tell me Dye now. Is very cool. Too. I want to know who 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 is the most badass warrior. But I want to know <laughs> now. I do want to ask you while we're talking about Hollywood's relationship with the military. Yep. Do you ever watch a movie? And we have a large military audience. And I I've sat with friends who are in the military, whether it be Marines or Army, and you'll you'll see a movie and they'll go, no, that that doesn't happen. Some have said that Saving Private Ryan was fairly accurate. Yeah. Band of Brothers was fairly was accurate. Yeah, it was good. Uh. I saw the History Channel's documentary on Black Hawk Down, and then they interviewed the actual, the actual members of it was Task Force Ranger, right? The, the, the Ranger Battalion guys, yeah. And one of the guys is now a country singer. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kenny he is. Thompson is is a country singer now. But they all gave kudos to the to the to the film producer, saying, "Yeah, they, right. they really tried to 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 keep this accurate." Um, when you watch a movie that's clearly, you know. And, you know, let me take it for example. <laughs> Heartbreak Ridge with Clint Eastwood. Right. I, I love Clint Eastwood. Of course, he was Clint, cool. He, he's dirty, hairy. But and I'm not trying to get any kind of inner branch rivalry here, but I, I, from what I know, Force Recon Marines aren't, they aren't the unit the way they portray them as no. these idiot slacker. No, you no know. not at all. They're really tough guys, actually. So when, when, when they're making movies, is it if they don't get someone like Dale Dye, if they don't get someone who could advise them, do they really get it wrong? It de- you know it depends on the movie maker, I suspect, because it also depends on their ability to be objective and their ability to do their own research. And a lot of these guys don't. I mean, I actually have worked even as an advisor on some things where I saw the actors were holding a gu- their guns and they looked like Charlie's Angels. I said, dude, dude, come here. You can't hold your weapon like that. That's not how we go into a room. Little things like that are worth looking into if you're going to be doing a show because it's it's so obvious to guys like me. We don't get that spun up about it because... It is Hollywood, and I'm not expecting these guys to put on a documentary. I don't like, and I can speak for everybody in the military, I don't like when Hollywood uh, uh, and, and TV portrays the military as any kind of victim. You know, when we get killed or we get guys hurt, 
we mourn their loss and we we continue on. But we don't consider ourselves victims. We signed up for that. We know what we're doing. Now, so it's a kind of it depends on how they portray us in like a certain framework. They can try to use us as victims or hey man, no, this is what we do. Now what up? Because I read Anthony Swaffer's book <clears throat> Jarhead, and then yeah. I saw the movie with with Jake Gyllenhaal. I didn't see the movie. The, the book, you know, look, everyone has different experiences with the military. I mean, we, it's not some tiny little thing. Lots of people have served for a million different reasons. There are a million different jobs. Some people are going to come out and say, you know what, uh, that was great. And some people are going to come out and say, that that didn't work for me. Right. Swafford, talented writer, really portrayed the military in, in a really horrible light. Right. It seemed Hollywood seized on this. What about when they make movies like In the Valley of Ela or Redacted or, or Redacted, yeah. and they come to the military and say, well, we need some advice on how to make this anti-military movie. I don't think they would come to. I can't, yeah, listen, we want to make, make you, a movie about. We're gonna portray you guys as real morons. We want to make you guys look like idiots. So can you help us out? Yeah, I don't. I think most guys like Dale Die would tell him to go bleep off. Because Band of Brothers and Saving Private Ryan, he was in. He was. Yeah, in, he played. He played uh, Colonel Sink. Sink and, yeah, 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 and, yeah. He, and he's by the way the nicest, coolest guy. As soon as he and I met, it was just like blah blah blah, talking, talking. Yeah, that. I don't know really what to say about that. You know that there's it, those kind of movies are. And by the way, isn't it interesting that those kind of movies. Did very poorly. I mean, well, really, the, anti, you, uh, the anti-war. Yeah, movies. because because I think people people they smell that. You know, they're like, no, 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 no. And you're right about something else too. The military is really, I, I probably get in trouble for saying this. It's it, in some ways, it's just a big branch of the government, and in some ways, it could almost be considered a welfare system because there's a very small amount of guys in the military that actually do the fighting, and that's okay, by the way. Most people fall in the support role, and we need them, and there's a lot of hardcore, great support people. I think it's like 10, 15, 20% of the dudes in the military are actually in combat roles. Uh, infantry, armor, artillery, special for- special operations, that kind of stuff. And guys like us, we it's a different army. It's a different army, and I don't know anybody that it's been, and I've been in combat units, 82nd, like we were talking about, 10th Special Forces Group in Europe where I live, 19th Group now. I don't know anybody who's buying what's going on right now as the way to go because we deal, we're green berets, we're problem solvers and things like political correctness, promoting people on a basis of like what color they are, that gets guys like us killed in combat so it doesn't even happen. So to see it happening now in the government and even in kind of U.S. society, it's well, kind of, it's you've disappointing. Been dying, you've been dying to speak your mind unedited for a while, haven't you? Yeah, I've kind of had a shut I, I, up. I can tell. I can tell when I get a guest on the program who's like, "Oh boy, I'm on conservative." I'm on Will Cow Show. I'm on conservative minded talk radio. I could say anything I want to say, and I'm not going to get in trouble with the host. Um, <laughs> no, you're not going to get in trouble. But also, you would have to say that the military is a reflection of society. I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's people. I, you know, I went down to visit one of my friends, 82nd right, Airport, at Bragg. Fort Bragg. Rizzuto and I drove the 10 hours down and the 10 hours back, and when we went out to the Waffle House for breakfast or out to one of the bars. And I just, when I saw, just, I just saw people. I saw some people like this kind of music, they right. like that kind of music. Yep. They like this kind of beer. It's not like you join the military and all of a sudden, you know, you give up some portion of your identity while in uniform, but you're still the person that you were before. You, you're you still like country or you like hip hop. Right, or you're a metalhead or something you, like that. You're a vegetarian before you went in or you're not a vegetarian. Whatever it is you were, you're that guy or that girl, but in uniform, you're you're on the job. Yeah, you're right, man. It's a big cross section of society, and it's it's a great, it's the best thing I ever did, and I've, I've I've been lucky, man. I've been I've been I've worked with some of the smartest, most competent dudes I've ever met. I mean, I I have a degree in anthropology. He sounds just like Jason, doesn't he? <clears throat> he sounds like you sound exactly like our friend Jason, who's who's uh, we're waiting for him to get home, and maybe his wife's. Listening oh, God bless him. Break. He's over there now. Yeah, he's over there now. He's a squad leader. I'm not going to give out his last name. Or no, her. don't, don't. Yeah, I but he's in the 82nd. That's yeah. my old unit, so I have a lot of. And he took us all over. Go. He took us all over Fort Bragg. Yeah. Um, we'll finish finish up what you were saying. Well, what I, was, I want to talk about the show and and then well, how you came to end up on the show. Some, and, something political, which I, which I think people need to know is it, you don't have to be Republican or Democrat to be smart about the military and understand how important we need it. I mean, if you go to Fort Bragg where you were, the Green Beret School, John, but it's it's called the John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center. That's where we go for all of our training and all of our advanced schooling. And John F. Kennedy was a Democrat, but he recognized the threat. Well, back in the day. Yeah, but but at least that guy recognized a worldwide threat to the United States and said, well, we're going to bear any cost. He actually gave us our Green Berets back. The Army wanted to take them away way back then. 
because they didn't want an elite unit and to send some kind of a weird signal. And, and JFK was like, nope, no, these guys are the cutting edge right now to keep us safe. So you, you can, it's just about being smart and problem solving, you know? Greg, Greg Boulevard <laughs> yeah. was uh, very, very interesting. <laughs> Dude, it's been cleaned up. When I was there, that was cleaned up. Oh, you don't even understand. Fayetteville used to be called Fayette Nam, and if it's because you go down there, there used to be his strip club. Not that I ever went. It's called Rick's. So you've heard I, through a friend, multiple friends, not even a direct friend. I, I DJed <clears throat> at, 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 a, at a strip club when I first started a radio outside of Eglin Air Force Base. Where if, oh, down in Florida, oh, yeah. oh, of course, and yeah. We, we would we it was where the Rangers went for Florida yeah. Phase I've been there. I've, Eglin, that's a, that's a swamp okay. phase for Rangers going. Okay, it so sucks. I, I was there. I was the DJ at Kay's Body Shop. <laughs> So I, I know CD... Bragg Boulevard has always been what it... And that's just the way it always is around some of these military bases. And Fayetteville was really bad. They cleaned it up. Fayetteville's actually this been restored uh, town. It's very uh, picturesque now. They have the big Airborne Special Ops Museum. But yeah, man, Bragg... You've got Bragg Boulevard. I even got a tat... One of them, I have a bunch of tattoos. One of them I got on Bragg Boulevard.